What's up gamers, welcome to my little shotgun spread mini scheme for NCAA 14 CM Bauer 0531 here and today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite uh, actually my favorite play in NCAA 14 if you guys have paid attention to uh, I think I've gotten a, a gameplay here in the, the defensive ebook and I'm going to try to put a gameplay up on the YouTube channel soon um, but the shotgun spread and uh, th this is my little custom book here I got uh, a couple of little things I've been doing out of this but basically, here's what we got. So, shotgun spread, this is the, the, the bread and butter. And the play that we're going to be coming out in is the run and shoot switch dig. Now, this play is a monster. In my opinion, it's the best play on NCAA 14. And we're going to show you why in this video. So, we're going to come out in, um, well, let's see. Let's come out in the nickel 335. And for coverage purposes, we're going to come out in a cover 4. Okay, so we're coming out in a cover 4 here. Alright, so the adjustments I like to make on this play is I like to put the right side receiver on a drag route, as you can see here. And I like to put the running back on a streak, and you see that this is what the play will look like at the snap of the ball. If there are receivers, if there are cornerbacks over the top of the receivers, as you see here, sometimes I also like to put the circle receiver on a slant route in that situation, because this is a possible tell that it may be main coverage. So here we go. The first read here is you're going to read both of the wheel routes. If those, if either one of those guys blitz, that will be wide open. So here, okay, they don't, they're not wide open, but the slant's going to be wide open underneath it because slant routes are very effective this year. Very simple. You're just going to hit, you're just going to pat, excuse me, pass lead about um, 3 o'clock, or not 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and hit the slant route. Now, what if they baseline their coverage? So, uh, if you guys know, one of my favorite things to do is base align and press, okay? So, base align and press to make everything look the same. Now, if they, if your opponent does something like this, and, and this is why I love this, love, love, love this formation, it's very easy to tell. Now, a lot of times what will happen if they are doing something like base align and pressing is there will be a blitz or a pressure setup. So, what I like to look for here is you see that there's a dude over the slot. So, the only read that I have on this play is if that guy blitzes. You see he doesn't blitz, but there is nobody out there to cover that right side slot and we can hit him for a quick three four yards here and there and that's what I in my opinion this scheme is based on being able to beat the blitz as well as beat uh, any team that likes to run uh, not run disciplined defenses and have people on the inside so you see if they're moving guys down like this and this is what you'll see from a lot of elite players this year they're going to move guys down inside so what these wheel routes are going to be able to do is they're just going to beat them to the outside as you see there's no way they can get out there in time and that's why I like the wheel routes as opposed to the flat routes because they go upfield and get a little bit of an advantage on the opponent so anyways guys the first read on this play is where the DBs are now that we've identified that the DBs are over the wide receivers our first progression read is going to be the drag and as you see the drag is going to get really good open for a quick five six yards here and there and very very effective now the next thing I want to do is I want to show you this play against man coverage and all of the goody goody goodies that it has in it so basically what they're going to do is we're going to snap the ball here I want to show you some of this um, so that's the first thing that you're going to be able to do against man coverage you're going to be able to hit these wheel routes uh, right as they break up the field uh, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to pass lead it you're not going to pass lead it at all you're just going to bullet pass it so here on the left just bullet pass, you're going to click on, and you're just going to catch it. You don't even always have to click on, guys. Uh, they're very effective this year and really very good against man coverage. Lastly, if your opponent's running coverage D out of two man under, so maybe something like this. Two purples, a quarterback spy, one guy blitzing. And as you see that this deep post route, no coverage D will cover it. We can click onto it and user catch it for big, big gains. So you see that this formation is really a tough formation to defend. It's very simple. I mean, it's it really is. It really is simple. You're just reading these the position on the field. The thing I love about the drag route and the post route combinations here is they cut zones off. As you saw right there, uh, let me take a sh let's take a little look at instant replay here as we take a look at this uh, this offense. Now. What's going to happen here is this drag route is going to act like a pick play. So you see, if that if their cornerback is not in a flat zone or a yellow zone, man, there's no way for this guy to get out there in time to cover that. There's no way he's covering that route. Now let's take a look at this play against a cover three flat zone. Cover three has a standard flat zone by the safety. He's going to come down the field here. So if you guys are going to look here, what will happen against cover three is it will stay with them, as you see there. But if we pass lead it up, it completely, for some reason, the AI this year, they will not follow the, the, the dude upfield. For what reason, I do not know. 
but it's effective. We're going to take advantage of it. So once we see him do this, we, we're just going to wait for him to clear and pass lead at 12 o'clock to get the ball up the field. Now, of course, you can do this to the left side as well. The beauty of this is they have to guard both sides, and it's darn near impossible to do that. Now, the wheel on the right, it takes a little bit more time. That's why it's our second read and not our first read. And you see it's going to crush cover three as well. And then the last, uh, also really quickly, just want to show you guys, just to emphasize my point here, uh, the drag route still beats the cover three. And you know what else also beats cover three? Let's take a look at this one more time. Same adjustments. The running back out of the backfield right there is going to get really good space in the cover three zone. If you want a safe pass against a cover three shell, go ahead and hit that route as it comes out of the backfield. Lastly, guys, if they're playing some type of maximum cover situation or just have really good user skill, this route right here will crush cover three and as well as every other coverage in the game. So there you go, guys. This is one of the best money plays in the game and a phenomenal thing to use. Now, let's say your opponent starts uh, getting crafty here. Uh, so he's going to send a blitz off the right side. So what he's going to do is he's going to shift to make it look like he's coming off the left, but in reality, he is going to come off the right. So he's going to bring these guys down. He's shifting and blitzing and whatnot, so he's going to bring a pressure. Uh, he's going to send uh, a five-band pressure concept, and it's going to get uh, one guy free off the edge. So he has, this is his basic coverage. So what he's going to do to kind of take it a little, make it a little better is he's going to drop this guy in a purple zone. He's going to shade his coverage down or something like this. And this is just something like a standard cover 3 zone blitz might look like. Okay, so you see that this is what it looks like. And our play looks like this. So our first read on the play is always that wheel route to see if this guy blitzes. So my immediate read is if that linebacker blitzes, I automatically know that that's where I'm going with the ball. He blitzes, I automatically throw it for quick 5 yards. That is why this scheme is so effective, guys, because 5-yard gains in NCAA 14 can be easily turned into 20 and 30 and 45-yard gains. So take a look here. You send the pressure. So if they send, uh, okay, so what if they even put the, the corner here in a flat zone? Uh, let me see here. There we go. Got him in a flat zone. So they got the corner in a flat zone to cover the wheel route. Well, this is why you use real routes and not flat routes because what you're going to see is as soon as that wheel route cuts up field, a pass lead up is going to absolutely torch that concept. And, of course, guys, what if they do add of cover two instead of cover four? Cover two is built to have stock flat routes. So here we got cover two sink, one of the better coverages in the game. We're going to send pressure out of it. Obviously the same exact read that we're making offensively. Look what's wide open. The drag's wide open. That's why you look to that side of the field, and you don't just stare down one route. you got to use the whole field. And uh, that's why this play is really effective, guys. So, uh, in short, uh, this is, you know, I mean, you're just reading the outside patterns, and if they don't go with them immediately, you have it. The only way they can stop the wheel routes, guys, and, and let's be honest here, the only way that they can stop the wheel routes is by calling a cover three zone and manning, like, they'll have to man this guy up on him. So you see here, uh, whoops, let me get over here to this guy. So I'm going to man that corner up on this receiver on this play. And what you're going to see is, this is probably going to do about the best job you can do. And uh, double covered, and that, that's okay. But look at what happens if they do that. So say they call two-man under, because it's probably the best to do it at a two-man under. And they put their safeties in purple zones, okay? So they put the safeties in purple zones to get them to the outside to stop those pesky wheel routes. Well, take a look. The wheel routes still beat it, so they can't max cover it. The only way they can really stop the wheel routes are by putting them on, like I said before, the flat routes, and they have to kind of shade them out there. So, you're, I mean, it's kind of a tell that it's going to happen anyway. So they make that quick adjustment, and they, they, they put those guys out there, but take a look at what will happen on the back side. If they do something like that, a pass lead up on those wheel routes, you're going to click on, and you're going to hold the joystick. Uh, you're just going to move him to the inside here. So I'm going to show you how to re uh, user catch these real quick. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to wait a little bit. So you're going to wait for it to clear past the flat zone. And once it clears past the flat zone, just a bullet pass, and you're going to click on and go underneath the ball. It's pretty simple. Um, it's just a simple route anticipation concept. Um, it's, it's not too much to, to learn easily. Uh, like I said, just... Just click on and, and, and go get the football. I mean, it's, it's not too complicated. If I can do it, you can do it. And just, you know, just work on it. So here, and then again on the left side, if you it's the same thing. Bullet pass. And then you, you get that animation on that side. So that's kind of what we're doing with those wheel routes. That's why they're so effective. And then these other, these other routes really work off of it. Now, one of the things you can also do with the spread, and this is why I like it so much, 
It's a situation like this where they don't baseline. So they don't baseline. So it's 5 on 5. Well, I can quickly audible to my run audible down here. And I have the numbers game. It's the 45 quick base, guys. And you see, I'm going to get 5 yards every single time no matter what they do. Uh, I mean, let me just show you here. I'm going to blitz every single guy. Every single guy on the line of scrimmage. Blitz, blitz. I'm going to crash slide down. I'm blitzing everybody. Okay, so I'm blitzing all 5 guys. I'm still, I'm still going to be able to run the ball. I'm still going to be able another, to Another good concept that people like to use with stopping the run is to um, spy. So this guy was out there because they got to cover the slot receiver. So they'll use the spies. So th whoops. Sorry about that, guys. Let me get out of bounds here. So they'll use, like, um, quarterback spies or something for the linebackers so that they lurk. That's a, a concept I like to use. And what we're going to do here is we're going to show you, even with the spies, I mean, you can hit the edge, you can hit everywhere on the field. That time they got lucky in a block shot. That really, I'm being honest with you guys, I've never seen that happen to me in-game before. Uh, this this is a phenomenal run, guys. And uh, it's a staple of my offense. If I ever see that they're in a five down, if they have a front like this where I feel like I can run on, uh, I'm going to take my five yards. It's, like I said, it's an automatic five yards. Uh, can't be mad at an automatic five yards ever. And it's, it's one of the best runs in the game. They didn't have an inside zone from spread that I felt comfortable with. Um, the inside zone wasn't as good as this quick base, so I like this quick base because, like I said, it almost guarantees the, the yardage and the game speed is a little faster in the online uh, ranked match, so uh, you know, you'll be able to break a little bit bigger gains, and if you have a better back than the Florida has, then you'll be breaking even better gains. Okay, guys, let's take a look at the other quick audibles we have in here. Um, the quick audible to the right is the corner strike, and you guys know how big of a fan I am of the corner strike right now. So the adjustments are simple. What I like to do is I like to put the the two slot receivers on the zig route. So this is a nice change up to the wheels that we've been doing. And then I like to put my running back on an option route. Now the first reads on these plays are just like uh, in my offensive ebook. If you guys do not know, I have an offensive ebook out. Basically, if you guys just email me, I'll leave a link to my email in the description. I will send you the ebook for free, no charge. And it's uh, it's actually a really good ebook. I've had some good testimonials. So, and then if they're in man coverage, I mean, the zigs are still going to be man here. So, you get the zigs as your first read. And it's a pretty simple, pretty basic read. The beauty of it is it's on both sides of the field. So, they cannot just jump one side. And they can never key in. Key, they can never key in on what you're really wanting to accomplish because you can do it off of both sides. And the beauty of the C routes is that they beat everything in the game. So cover four with the purple route, oh, they beat it. Okay, so they beat cover four with purples. Uh, you know what else they beat? They beat cover three. They definitely beat cover three. See how the cover three is going to stay with those zig routes, and the C routes are going to be wide open one again. Uh, you, you don't think they beat man coverage? Well, that's going to show you right here. Two man under. C routes are going to beat two man under. As you see right there, crushes two men under. Um, and then real quick, I'll show you a uh, cover zero blitz. You don't think you have enough time to get these routes off? Well, the beauty of the C routes is that they're unbumpable. So here I'm going to call press coverage, and my corners are not going to press. If you take a look here, just watch the C routes. They, they may press the drags, or they won't press it. They may press the zigs. Just watch the C routes, though. So I call press coverage, and nothing happens. They absolutely torch the defender, and then it's a lot easier of a read to throw it. So the beauty of the C-Rats, guys, is they beat every single coverage in the game, and they're also a nice little mix-up in case you ever get bored with running the wheel route, even though I don't know why you would ever have to get out of that, because I haven't had to get out of it either. Uh, the only way they could really stop this, I mean, maybe if they call cover to sync at the right time, so if they call cover to sync here, um, you're going to see it. Uh, you just want to pass it. Uh, yeah, see, they're still open. Cover to sync does not stop uh, the, the, the C-Rats, so that's, oh, that's pretty cool. So, I mean, you beat every coverage in the game with this play, uh, just with that route, really, and you have them to both sides of the field. So, I mean, there's no, uh, in theory, there's no way they can stop you. You just throw to the opposite side of the user. Now, one thing that I have seen uh, is a cover four, and they'll put their defensive end in a flat route, and that's the only thing that's giving me trouble, but I don't remember if it gave me trouble on NCAA or the Madden 25 demo. So let me check it real quick just to show you. So I'm just going to throw the C route blind. I'm not making a read at all. Hey, yeah, see, it still beats it on NCAA, so it must have been on the Madden 25 demo that it stops it. So anyways, guys, that's the C route portion, and uh, now let's check out the play action pass. Oh, I don't have a play action pass. Okay. So once again, the run here, if they ever, you know, if they ever get lazy. Uh, another thing you can do with this run is you want to go ahead and slide protect uh, aggressive. And when you slide protect aggressive, the, the dude will always block the nose tackle. You saw the, as you saw last time, I didn't do it, and he came right through the A-gap. But you see when you slide protect aggressive, it's always going to give you the same blocking every time. So it's good to have that uh, consistency in your offense.
Okay. So here and then like you always have that cutback lane. Always have that cutback lane. That cutback lane is almost always open out of this play. So I mean this play really is a monster. Now real quick I wanted to show you one other concept here, one other play. Uh, if we call two men out of here, this route to circle is gonna beat man coverage. So we wait for it to cut to the inside and you see he's just gonna step right in front of his dude. So you can use that if you want. Uh, if 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 it was me um, then if I was going to do that, then I'd put the running back on an option route here, so that essentially, if it was um, man coverage, I mean, this is this is just an absolute uh, man coverage beater all over the field. I mean, there's there's no way you could run man. I don't really think there's any way you could run zone. You'd have to mix your coverage in. But even anyway, if they were to run man coverage, your running back would basically just run an out route. If they were in zone, he'd run a hitch. And then the concept with a drag that we were talking about earlier from the um, from the when we put him on a drag to clear out the space against cover four, cover six, and stuff like that. Well, you see here, it's still going to work the same exact way. He's still going to hold the guy out, and then you can, you know, like I said, it, uh, it's really easy to shake people off this year. So that's why we're going to really over, uh, we're going to abuse the yards after catch, um, the ability to get easy yards after catch in this game. So. As you see, I mean, this offense is, it, it's not really even an offense. This is like a little mini scheme, and uh, it's something I really love. So, this is the base play. This is the basic foundation, and uh, it's one of the best in the game by far. Okay, guys, really quick here. We're going to take a look at my audible, uh, or my other formations I have in here. The five wide receiver bunch, the normal offset, the trio four wide receiver, the five wide receiver tight, and I also have the pistol strong slot. Pistol strong slot is one of the best formations in Madden NFL 25, as well as in CAA. So real quick, we're going to take a look at it here. So... Actually, I audible to the five wide receiver bunch first. So, five wide receiver bunch here. This is pretty simple. What I like to do on this is I like to put R1 on a zig route. I like to put R or circle here on a streak or a fade or an out. I mean, I get creative with him. He's kind of like my receiver. I do whatever with. And then uh, square, I like to leave him on that route. Now, sometimes I motion the, the back out. Sometimes I don't. But you see when you motion him out, he gets this... Um, a little bit better separation, uh, at least on man coverage. And he's never going to give you a lot of yards, uh, but it's a more consistent throw, in my opinion, than than if you leave him in tight. Uh, at least from what I've seen, and you know that's just kind of what I've uh, I have to say about it. And then uh, as far as the other reads on this play, I mean, really your only only read is that wheel route, and then you have these other couple drags. So the drag's gonna or the zig's gonna beat the man coverage. The drag's gonna beat the zone. Nothing new here. Uh, like I said, that's your first read. Your first read is gonna see if you're if you can hit the if you can hit the drag or the wheel. If you can hit the drag or the wheel, you're throwing that 100% of the time. But if you if you can't hit the drag or the wheel, say it's man coverage and maybe man bump or something, uh, and they press you, then you're gonna go ahead and hit that zig route. So here's zone coverage, and you see the effectiveness that we can throw drags at it th again this year. Uh, very effective zone beaters in that route con concept. And then, uh, real quick, I wanted to show you a little something I do at a single back tight. So what I do at a, uh, at a single back tight is I like to throw these little hitch routes. So basically, it's just a snap throw. So snap throw. Well, a little bit too soon there. Um, you either want to throw it like instantly, or wait a second. Like you want to, you just got to work on your timing. You don't want to throw intermediate. That time I went a little bit too quick. Um, so here, snap. Uh, wait till he turns. Hold on one second. Let me get that animation again. But it's really good for uh, down in the red zone. So let me show you this. This is what I've been using as well. Uh, the, you know, I have a really good red zone play uh, out of the, the base play here. Uh, but out of this um, X under play, what I do is I just come down here and I put the outside receivers on hitch routes. So two hitch routes on the outside. And then I streak or zig these inside guys. And so what's going to happen here is, is I'm going to snap and throw those hitch routes. If they get bumped like you saw they did there, uh, what you're going to do is, number one, your inside slots will never get bumped. So if they do bump those outside guys, you can easily snap throw those zig routes. But if you guys want to just, honestly, if you want to throw to the hitch route 100% of the time, you're going to wait for him to get off the bump, and then when he turns, he's going to catch that very easily for a nice catch against man coverage. The beauty of this route, of this route combination, and uh, what we're doing here is, it, is it's going to do really a good job, a better job against cover three, because what's going to happen against cover three is these hitch routes will be wide open right there, and there you see Dunbar, you dropped it two times for me, buddy. Come on, bro. Uh, but you see the ease at which they are wide open against cover three. So basically what you're doing here down in the red zone is you're going to read the 
um, dudes on the outside. If, if, if they get pressed, you're going to hit extra triangle. If they don't get pressed, you're going to throw to them. Don't get pressed, throw to them. That's three drops in a row. Come on, Dunbar. Golly. But you see, I mean, they're open. They're wide open. Every, I mean, they're wide open. Um, the only way they can stop it is cover two or two man under. Uh, but if they do that, that's why we have the zigs on this play. And you guys can put the running back on a wheel route if you want. And, you know, just use him at your discretion. But you see there, the, there's the, the, snap throw, uh, the snap throw hitch routes. And you, uh, you can only hot route those when you're in tight to the outside receivers. Okay, let's get back a little bit, but get a little bit outside here, and let's go over the next audible. So the next audible is the play drag under. It's from the shotgun doubles. If you guys, bought, if you guys checked out my offensive ebook, you know the the love that I have for this play. Basically, what I do out of this is I like to put my running back on a wheel route, and the the the, the read is on the left side of the field. If if he gets if he's pressed up, then I read the running back first. If he's not pressed up, then I read that route first. Okay, so he's pressed up, so I'm going to read the running back first, and you see that the running back gets a lot of space, gets two men under. You can very effectively throw it to him with a pass lead to the outside. Okay, so we know that. Um, okay, so what if they're in, say, cover three? Okay, so say cover three, that off coverage, that tells me that I can hit the bow. So what you're going to do is you're going to throw a pass lead down right there. And you see that DeBose is going to get a lot of space in that cover three zone. It's going to be very hard for your opponent to really um, to, to be able to stop this play because of the ease at which, it is, at which it is set up. You just make one adjustment to it. So here, once again, that's there. So I'm just going to throw that route to DeBose. Sometimes he'll drop it, but most of the time he'll catch it, and it'll be money in the bank. The, and then the uh, other reads on this play are, are pretty simple, just kind of standard. Uh, after, the, after you get by the first read, you're just going to progress down. So uh, there you see the corner route is going to be your second read. As you see him just freaking get blown up on that jumping animation there. But, I mean, this is it's pretty good. I mean, it, it's a pretty good play. It, it's not as powerful as the shotgun spread is, but it's really effective mainly for the quick audibles out of this. So if we quick audible down, we have the, uh, as you see, we have the... the um, zero run trap play and this is very very effective it's it, it's in my opinion one of the top five runs in NCAA 14 and Madden NFL 25 as well so what you're going to do with this run is you're just going to call it and you're mainly looking to cut back uh, to the pulling guard side because you see that little sea of it's just a wide open hole I mean it really is so just I mean just call it if it's if it's uh, a situation like this so you read this so if you read this in the spread then I would recommend you audibly actually to the to the um, the doubles and then audibly do your run audible down here and then just saying okay well six on six I've got numbers I'm gonna call it and go you don't want to quick snap it you want to wait till everybody's set though cuz sometimes when players move before right before the snap they get little animations and turbo turbo blood scenes so you don't want to have any of that uh, the next play on this is the uh, let's see what else we got here I think do we have a quick pass out of this one I don't think we do uh, nope uh, deep pass yeah we do have a deep pass that's not anything special though we don't really use that. Uh, I don't really use anything really outside of the freaking spread, though, to be honest. Uh, all right, so let's go over Pistol Strong. So Pistol Strong is pretty simple. Uh, the only play I call out of Pistol Strong is the triple option. And this is for situations where I just want to run the ball a little bit. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to call hike. If they go with the running back, you're going to keep it, and then you're just going to read who they take on the pitch. Sometimes they'll take the quarterback, sometimes they take the halfback, sometimes they do the same thing every time. You just have to learn how to run the triple and read option. It's pretty simple. Uh, I have a tip on my uh, YouTube channel that you guys can check out for free, no, no, no charge. And, you know, just go over there, check that out. It really does have a pretty good idea of how to read, run the read option. So here he goes with that guy. He goes with the quarterback, so I hit the pitch man, and, you know, that's just kind of how you run it. And you guys don't really see the power in this play yet, but hopefully the defense will give me an opportunity to show it to you. Let me see if they do. Nope. And then, like, you can, I mean, the quarterback can, I mean, the quarterback breaks so many tackles, too, for you this year. Um, let me see if I can get some. Let me see if the DN will please, pre, please uh, just stay at home here. So there he stays at home, and you see the running back is, it's like, it's, it's such a good run. It's actually a wide receiver, too, at running back when you audible to this formation. And, like, the run, like, he literally, they, it's like the best run in the game. Like, I don't know, I, it's hard to, it's hard, I've never really been stopped for negative yardage on this run, if I read it correctly. 
and uh, it's just a really good run. I mean, it's worth probably two or three tries down in the red zone, I, honestly, I mean, to run this play. as it Because I mean, you see, you get that cutback angle right over the middle of the field, and, the, and they don't block shit on it. So it's a really effective run. Running the ball is back, man. I'm, I'm excited because running the ball is back. But, I mean, you see the ease at which you run the ball, man. Ugh. Man, that's tough to stop. Okay, so, uh, and then the last audible we have here in our playbook is the read option out of the trio offset. And basically, uh, that's pretty much the only play I run out of this formation. Uh, the run audible down is read option. Uh, oh, the PA pass is the wide receiver middle screen, so you just snap it and throw it a circle. Normally, it's going to be open. And the only time you run that is when they start shutting down your read option and you just want to throw something else at them. It's not very complicated at all. And I know I'm running through these really fast, but it's mainly because I don't want you to run these plays. I want you to run the spread. Uh, the spread is, it's hands down, the best base offense in the game. It's hard to stop. On honesty, you can't, if you are a good, uh, are you? if you read it correctly, if you make the one or two reads you have to make correctly, you can't stop that offense. There's no way. There's, there's no way. In this, in this year's game, there's, there's no way you can stop that offense. I, I promise you. Um, there is so much adjustments that they would have to do. That's why I run no huddle with it. And there's, there really is no way. Look at what just happened. That was crazy. That was freaking hilarious. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, I made a custom playbook with this. Um, so just put the plays I discuss in your, in your custom playbook. Uh, the formations I went over are the trio offset, the shotgun spread, the pistol strong, the shotgun five wide receiver bunch, and the ace tight. I think that's all that I, oh, and the shotgun trio offset. But yeah, that's that's pretty much what I went over. Uh, and then real quick, I want to show you this quick goal line tip that I found out of the shotgun spread. That way you don't ever have to get out of it. So um, down about the five yard line was it was getting tough to score with the shot with the shotgun because if in my ebook if you guys bought my ebook or checked out my ebook you know I would just run the 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 user catch comeback routes in the goal line but they were getting stopped and it uh, against cover two sync cover two sync was kind of getting in the way so I developed this so basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit. Uh, you're going to pass lead your wheel routes, and you're going to user catch them. So you see it gets man, it's money. It's, it's obviously going to be man. That's, that's a given. What about against zone? Well, you're going to, you have to wait a little bit against zone. So you see right there, that's not what we want. But you see how the wheel route on the left side is a little bit angled. So what's going to happen here is he's going to float to the back of the end zone. And you're just going to uh, pass lead, no pass lead, just bullet, pass it. And uh, it's like a it's like a jump ball animation he'll get. So let me see if I can get it to you. Wait, 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 wait. Throw, and you just hold L2 and triangle. I mean, you, that's what I do. I just hold it, and uh, if he gets it, he gets it. If he doesn't get it, he doesn't get it. But most of the time, he's been getting it. See, like right there, and that's what will happen. He'll just stand there and catch the ball. Like I don't know. You tell me. I mean, that's pretty freaking effective in my opinion. If you, I mean, you don't have to take a hit, so. But, and then you can mix in the slants, of course. But you see, like, it's like a back of the end zone type deal. So you can mess with that. And then the other thing I like to do inside the five-yard line is I like to, like I said, I showed you already, throw, those, throw the little hitch routes. And also, these quick slants out of this play. Um, you gotta wait for them to beat the press. But against, uh, so a lot of times I'll run cover three or cover two on the red zone, right? So you hot route those two slants and the running back on the streak. Those slants are going to crush it. Just pass lead them to the inside, and, I mean, you'll be getting touchdowns for days. You can almost throw them without even reading them. Uh, the only way to stop them is by checking out my defensive ebook. I have a couple of good defenses for slants. But outside of that, there's no way. You, no stop coverage. No, no stop standard play in this game will stop that. And then the other thing I've been doing in the red zone, and more so on Madden, is these C routes. So what you can do is you can smart route these C routes. So you're going to smart route the routes by hitting triangle and then clicking the receiver's icon and then hitting R1. So we smart route these routes against man coverage. It's pretty self-explanatory. Pass lead to the outside and they'll get wide open, right? Now against cover three, it's a little different. So let's show you same uh, setup. So that's what we got looking here. All right, we go. Cover three. Pass lead it to the left. It's still wide open. There's, like, they don't like they don't get in the way. I don't know what it is. Now, uh, one thing I do like to do as well with this 
is I like to throw the zig. So I like to put this guy. I still like to put those guys on zigs because they serve the same purpose as a flat route, but they're going to be really good for the next tip I'm going to show you. So if a defense maybe runs uh, cover to sink in the red zone, check out what happens with these zigs. These zigs are uh, really effective. So they're going to pull those yellow zones out of the way. With a pass lead to the inside, you can hit your running back right there. But uh, real quickly, the, the against uh, cover to sink, this is where the C routes may struggle. Uh, I don't, I've never really, I don't know, I haven't tried this out yet. Let's see, this is... Uh, this is actually uh, a new, uh, I've never really looked at it against cover to sink. So you see pass leads to the back of the end zone and they do get in the way. So what you may do, this is what I've been doing on Madden 25 at least, is, like I said, I set my play up the same exact way. I'm going to wait for them to touch the corner. So right, oh dang it, I got, I got a little bit too much pressure. And if they're starting pressure, normally it'll be wide open. But, uh, you know, I'm just trying to get you guys a, an example. So let me just quarterback spy some guys, something that, uh, you know, they may do on the red zone. So, there you go. Maximum coverage defense on the red zone on first down. What you're going to do is you're going to wait for them to hit the, the, wow, I, dang it, I missed it again. You're going to wait for them to hit out of bounds. Basically, what's going to happen is they're going to run out of bounds. You're going to bullet past the, the, the C route. Uh, it doesn't matter at what, there's, there's no pass lead. Just bullet it, pass it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click on and you're going to hold L2. So go, click on, hold L2, and sometimes he'll jump up, sometimes he won't. Uh, it's it's just a uh, it's something I like to do. I don't know. You guys may not you guys may not like to do stuff like that. I think it's a, a cute little animation you get. So that's part of it, and it doesn't work to the left side. It works it, because the left side of the the left side C route on the on uh, PS3 is just not as effective as the right side for whatever reason. I don't know why, um, but it does work really well to the right. So let me show you again. Like right there, and then you just click on and uh, hold L2 and go get the ball. Okay, and then the last tip I want to show you is just a simple slant concept. So what you're going to do is you're going to call the play slants uh, with your hot routes. So you got the wheel route already to Pittman, so you don't have to worry about that flat route. So then you just put both receivers on the left side on slants, the receiver on the right side on slants, and you're going to block your running back to pick up any pressure. The only read is if that left side slot gets gets pressed. He gets pressed, so I know I'm going to the right side slant. The only, there are only two instances where he can get pressed. That's going to be two men under and cover three. So here we're going to show you that was two men under. You saw that it, it does it does very effect. It's very effective against two men under. Uh, that route was wide open, like I said it would be. And then against cover three, you're going to see it's wide open again. That wasn't even a slam, but you know you see. I mean, you see my point. If that guy gets pressed. The slant route against cover three is going to be standing wide open in the end zone. Sometimes they'll jar it loose, but they will never intercept it. You don't have to worry about that. And that's the key. Uh, all these routes will not be are hard to pick off in the goal line. As you see, pass lead it down maybe. But you see, I mean, it gets, uh, it gets what we need to do. But uh, the most common call defense on the, in the, inside the red zone is cover two or cover zero. So here's cover two. What's going to happen is... Square is going to beat everything to the left side and cover two. Uh, the the purpose of the triangle slant is to clear out space for square. So that in a situation where they're calling cover two, you just throw it, and he's I mean he catches it. You need to throw it a little quicker than that. Uh, I took a little bit. I took my time throwing that, but let me see if I can get a, a good example here for you guys. So here's throw, throw. That's where you want. You want it right as he breaks, um, right as he gets to the inside. Basically, is what it, what it is. So let me see if I can do one more mom spaghetti here for you guys. Um, so I snap. He doesn't get pressed. Throw it. As soon as you see he doesn't get pressed, throw to square. It's like an instant. It's like that fast. Um, it's like I said. It's it's not always the best option down in the red zone, but it's it's one of the most effective options in my opinion. So and then the last thing that you guys can do if you want to do it is you could throw the, the comeback routes. Basically, you're just going to snap and bullet past them and then lead your receiver to the lead your receiver to the ball. That's all you got to do. So you just need to go get it with your receiver. Now, this is the part where stick work is really, really important. You're just going to the inside and catching on. So you're going to click on your receiver after you throw it. Click on, go get the ball. They will not cover it in man coverage. The only coverage that gets in the way is cover to sink and as you see here sometimes cover to sink doesn't stop it I mean I throw it blind almost every time to be honest uh, it's very difficult to stop uh, I, I rarely ever get intercepted 
And you see, I mean, you just go get the ball in the back of the end zone. It's, it's very difficult for them to stop. This is why I like going for two-point conversions this season, guys. Because they, it's very hard to stop that. I, I mean, uh, cover zero blitz here. Cover zero blitz. So, off coverage, maybe. No, they're not stopping that. That's pass interference. Uh, cover, cover two. Cover two sink here. I mean, no stop. Um, so you could you come back routes. You could do the wheel routes that I showed you. You can use the the slant technique. There's so many options in the red zone, guys. This year, a lot of people are frustrated with the red zone offense, and in my opinion, it's one of the easier years uh, for red zone offense. And then obviously, you could do this as well. You could just put your receiver outside there on a fade, and you're gonna pass lead it, or you're not gonna pass lead. You're just gonna bullet it, and you're gonna click on, and you're gonna go 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock on your left analog stick. So in that order. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna snap, wait till he cuts, twelve o'clock, six o'clock, twelve o'clock, and he's gonna go up and get the ball. Uh, it's it's very simple. It's one of the better ways to catch those fades on the outside. Uh, you can just throw them. They won't get picked. So I mean that's what you'll get if you if if the if you know if the if the if the coin flip is right. But it's kind of like a coin flip. Either you're gonna get it or you're gonna drop it. But you don't get intercepted. So you see the swat. That's all they can do. They can't intercept it. So you're okay. Um, like I said. You know, this is very simple. Uh, don't over, don't overestimate the power of just throwing the freaking wheel routes, guys. I, I, I mean, they beat the blitz, so let's say they. Whoops, sorry about my controller. Please forgive me. Uh, let's say they come out cover three. Okay, they're coming out cover three, and they're gonna blitz the slot, dude. Because and they're gonna put this guy here in a in a in a flat. Maybe. So they put that guy in a flat. So the, uh, our route progression was the slant and the flat. That was what we were doing, right? Okay, slant, flat. They press that guy, so automatically that's going to be wide open. They can't get in the way of that. If they press the slant, there's no way they can stop it. So basically, guys, what I'm telling you is if that guy blitzes, it doesn't matter what zone that guy's in. He's not stopping whatever. He's not stopping triangle. He's not stopping triangle. That's why we put the dude on a slant. So really, if you want to get technical... If you put this dude on the left on a slant, there is absolutely no way they're stopping triangle. Man, zone, it doesn't matter. There's no way they stop it. They have to use their guard it. Um, it it's simple. It's as simple as 1, 2, 3, guys, this year. It really is. Um, let me put them in uh, a standard cover 2 with the, with the flat and the yellow. Okay, so standard cover 2 here. What happens in a press animation on the cover 2? They shove them off to the inside, right? So snap, press animation. See that? There you go. And that's it. it has to do with the angle that triangles routes on, uh, and that's why you can't do it to the right side. Now, that's the one drawback to this. But you know who's to say, you know who's to say it really even matters. They have to user guard that route, guys. I'm not kidding you. There, I mean, I will throw it. I'm gonna throw it 15 times, man. And there's no way to stop it. You know, the only way to stop it is if you throw it too late, as I just did. But like I said, I mean, there's this, this route's money, guys. Uh, against cover three, what will happen is it will get pressed, but then it's money. I mean, just throw it. No pass lead, just throw it. So, uh, pretty simple stuff, guys. Out of the spread, uh, I'm gonna cut the video off here, and I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna go get, go play a game real quick, and I'm gonna videotape it, and I'm gonna put it up for you guys. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna talk about the spread. I'm gonna talk about some other stuff. I'm gonna talk about whatever I feel like talking about, to be honest. But uh, this is this is money. This scheme is really good. It, it really is. It's really a it's a great scheme. Uh, check it out. Uh, I'm not going to write anything. I'm not going to do any writing for this one. You guys know I did a defensive one with no writing, and now I'm going to do an offensive one with no writing. Yeah, I'm getting lazy, I know. But it is the end of the season, and there's not a whole lot to this scheme. Uh, I really only run that spread play. So just go ahead and check it out, guys. Uh, really effective scheme. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, if you guys like this, or you guys can't wait for Madden 25, you can't wait for the content that I've got coming then, hit that like button below, please. Also, if you guys are new to the channel and you haven't seen us before, hit that subscribe button below. That's just going to let you uh, be notified of whenever we put out ebooks, tips, strategies, videos, anything we put out, you will get notified of as soon as it is uh, posted. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. Also, lastly, guys, make sure to check out all the links in the description. I left my, I leave my Twitter, my email, my blog, 
my playlist guides, everything is in that description. You've got to read the description. It is very imperative that you guys read the description of my videos from here on out because there's a lot of important things that are going to be on that description that have not been on it before. Uh, I'm starting to get a little bit more organized as the season goes on, getting ready for Madden NFL 25. I'm going to be as, as organized as possible. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Make sure to hold me down with a like rating. Also, if you guys could do me a big favor, I know a lot of you guys put a lot of time and effort into me and watching my videos and whatnot. And can you just show your support for me by sharing my YouTube channel on Twitter? So go to Twitter, and I want you, what I want you to do is I want you to send me a tweet at Madden Tips365. Say thank you, Cody. Uh, say thank you, Cody, or uh, Cody, you've helped me so much, or whatever, whatever testimonial you want to say. And then what I want you to do is I want you to put a link to my YouTube channel in that little tweet, which is going to show your friends what they're what you're actually talking about, so that they can check me out, and maybe they can get better at the game too. We're all about helping people here at this YouTube channel. I'm not about uh, views or subscribers or whatever. I'm just saying I want to help as many people as possible. I want to get the word out about what I've been doing over here at this YouTube channel, and uh, I'm so excited, guys. So uh, go ahead and hit, go ahead and do all that for me. I really will really appreciate it. Some of you guys won't do it. I know you won't, and that's all right. I understand that. That's why these videos are free to show you guys that I really do care about you guys. Thanks for watching so much, guys. We'll see you later.